Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another gun store vlog, and the question of the week is straw purchases. What are they, and what are the ins and outs, the legality surrounding straw purchases? Uh, like always, we will start off with some interesting inventory type stuff we've been getting in. A lot of my locals like to see that. If you're not interested in the inventory stuff and you are only here for the question of the week, scroll down to the comment section, pin to the top. I will have a comment with a timestamp. You can click on that timestamp and it'll take you right to the question of the week. Anyway, with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so I got you in the back room. I have gotten in a lot of kind of cool and unique stuff and a lot of the really more collectible stuff I do put up on Gunbroker. I don't have really a local market for a lot of this type of stuff. So anyway, I did want to show you the kind of stuff that's coming up and you can check out my handle blaze underscore ball on Gunbroker and you can find a lot of this stuff if any of it interests you. But anyway, I would just want to kind of show you the sort of the stuff I've gotten in. So this is one of the in more interesting ones. This is a Benelli M3 Super 90. It is a convertible pump to semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun. You just rotate the little levers here and that'll allow it to be pump action or you can turn it again. I think that will there lock lock that forward and now it's in semi-automatic mode. A lot of people in the Benelli, you know, in the kind of the M1 to the M4 within that lineup, a lot of people say that the M3 is the most complicated. Of course, it's the only one that can convert to pump action. So it does take a little bit of thinking in advance to know what you want to do. If you're in a tight, stressful situation, it might be a little bit something that could get in your way. But it is a way to switch between, you know, if you want to load in a non-lethal round or anything like that, you can switch between your pump and your semi-automatic mode. And Or if you want to run something that's got a little bit less power that might not cycle in a semi-automatic shotgun, you have the pump option there available to you. So anyway, that's an interesting one, Benelli M3. Here's another one. This is a Winchester Model 1895 in the sporting configuration, chambered in 30 US, also known as 3040 Crag. Now this would be the last one in the Winchester lineup uh, from Win or Lever Guns designed by John Browning, Model 1895. This one was made in 1903, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, this configuration, it was not sporterized. They were made in both a military configuration and a sporting configuration, of course, with the sporting fore end and rear sight, kind of the buckhorn rear sight. So that would be correct for this rifle. Not a whole lot of finish left on it, but that's to be expected for something that's about 120 years old. Anyway, very, very cool. These are very interesting rifles. Here I've got a Marlin 39A Original Golden. These are very, very nice 22s. In my opinion, actually the nicest lever action 22. I own an original Model 39 that's actually my father-in-law gave that to my son, so I'm keeping it for him. He's only three. Uh, so anyway, um, very, very, very fun rifles to shoot. They've been making the Model 39 for a very long time, so anyway, very nice history there. Here's another interesting one. This is a Belgian-made Browning BAR in 30-06. Now, this one was made in the first year of production, 1967, and it's an excellent shape. But these are phenomenal. If you're looking for a semi-automatic hunting rifle, one of the Belgian-made Browning BARs, excellent option. Winchester Model 61 Pump Action 22. These are really, really cool. This one is actually in 22 Magnum, which is pretty uncommon. It's an uncommon caliber for this rifle. Anyway, I believe this one was made in 50, uh, was made in the mid 50s at some point. I looked it up, but I can't remember right now. So for its age, this thing is in like new condition. Very, very cool. But anyway, that's just some of the used gun inventory I wanted to show you guys. It sort of gives you an idea of, this, of the sorts of used inventory that gun stores get in all the time, which is why I like to kind of start off the segment with that sort of stuff. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the question of the week. Okay, so the question of the week is straw purchases. What are they and what are some of the nuances when you own a gun store, kind of getting into that? Of how to identify a straw purchase, uh, what sales to allow to proceed and which ones you have to stop because it might be identified as a straw purchase. So before I get into that, I wanna say very clearly, I am not an attorney, I am not in law enforcement and I do not work for the ATF. So I am not giving you any type of legal advice. All I am telling you is basically how we operate in our interpretation of straw purchases. 
how we allow certain transactions to take place in our store, and that will, of course, different gun store to gun store. Now, starting off and with that being said, just to remind everybody that a gun store, a gun store owner has the right exclusively to deny or not allow to proceed any type of firearm sale transaction for any reason. So even if it's something that's you're in there buying it for yourself and the gun store owner just doesn't like the shirt you're wearing, they cannot sell you the gun. They are totally within their legal rights to do so. The ATF gives very, very strong uh, rights for a business to do that. But for the most part, a gun store owner has full discretion on who they will or who they will allow a sale to proceed with and who not based on certain scenarios. So one of the main scenarios that a gun store owner would stop a transaction would be under terms of a straw purchase. And to get over what a straw purchase is, a straw purchase is when you, the buyer, are purchasing a firearm on behalf of another person who is not legally or not able to purchase that firearm or pass the background check on their own. Therefore, you are circumventing the integrity of the background integrity, the integrity of the background check system in order to get a firearm into that prohib prohibited person's hands. Okay, whether directly or indirectly. So that is essentially what a straw purchase is. Now there is one caveat to that, and that would be the purchase of a gift for somebody, and I will explain that a little bit. A very cut and dry example of a straw, pur straw purchase would be customer A and customer B come into the store. Customer A does all the talking, asks all the questions, looks at all the firearms, decides what customer A wants to buy, and then customer B says, I'm going to do the paperwork. Or customer A says to customer B, here's my money, I'm gonna go outside and smoke a cigarette, you know, pick up the gun, and then customer B says, okay, I'm gonna buy that one. Okay, both of those cases, very cut and drear, that, that. Very cut and clear, very obvious straw purchases, okay? Person A, for whatever reason, does not want to do the paperwork, most likely because person A knows that they're not going to be able to pass the background check, therefore their friend or family member, person B, is going to be doing the purchase. Uh, another example, person A comes in alone, decides what firearm they want, looks at it, decides what they're going to pick out, and then they leave, and then almost instantly person B walks in without asking any questions or anything, says, I wanna buy that one right there. Typically, that's a little bit cut and dry, but that's probably going to be a straw purchase. And again, in any type of legal scenario where if person A is a felon and person B buys the gun for person A, and the person A goes and commits a felony with that or shoots somebody, the gun store can be held liable if it can be proven that the gun store acted negligently. So keep in mind, a gun store owner, they're not going to risk their entire livelihood and their freedom because gun store owners can be arrested and prosecuted and convicted on uh, in instances like this. And I'll give you an example in a minute. So gun store owners are always going to err on the side of caution. And again, they have the full discretion to do that, okay? They're not going to throw away their livelihood on one gun sale to you who they don't even know if they suspect you might be committing a straw purchase. And I say that in most cases. So what is the scenario of a friend or a family member buying the firearm for you or for you buying the firearm for a friend or family member in a legitimate uh, gift buying scenario. Now, legally, you can buy a firearm as a gift for a family member, a close friend, a relative. That's totally fine. There are two basic stipulations to that. And as being a gun store owner, when I'm in the store, if I am aware that somebody is buying a gift for somebody else, there's basically two requirements that I need to satisfy with myself. Number one, is it blatantly clear and obvious that they are, in fact, purchasing the firearm in good faith as a gift? What I mean by that is if you have a woman comes into the store, says, I'm purchasing a birthday gift for my husband, and these are, you know, she has a list, these are some of the guns that I know that he is really interested in. Can you show them to me? Okay, we look, okay, you know, I think he will really like this one, and, you know, I'm going to go ahead and buy it for him. Okay, that's totally fine. Now, at that point in time, I know it's a gift, and I will ask the question, Ma'am, do you have any reason to believe that your husband or whoever cannot legally come in here and fill out the background check on their own? Do you have any reason to believe that they cannot legally possess a firearm? If she says, oh no, if, if, if he's got a felony, that would be news to me, or no, he's, he's, he buys guns from gun stores all the time, I'm just buying this as a gift. Cool, 
not a problem. If she says, oh yeah, he is a felon, and, and I've had that happen one time, yeah, he's a felon and you know, uh, <laughs> I can't remember exactly what her words was a couple years ago said yeah he does have a felony but you know uh, that's fine you know I'm buying the gun for him anyway and I said well I'm gonna stop that right there because now that I know that you are buying this for a prohibited or a likely prohibited person I'm just going to cover my bases and, and say I'm sorry I'm not gonna let this proceed both to protect myself in, a ter in terms of a business also I don't want this firearm to end, end up in the hands of a convicted felon because that convicted felon lives in my community and I want to protect my community and that's the reasonable way that I see to do that that's that getting back to the gift um, Basically, you need to make sure that if you're buying a firearm for somebody that you're doing it in terms of it's uh, you're, it's ending up in the possession of somebody who you know is legally allowed to own the firearm. You're just coming in and buying it for them as a surprise. Another way that a lot of people like to make sure that everything's kosher on that end is to just buy a gift card, give the gift card to them as the gift, and then have them come out and pick out, you know, pick out the gun and do the background check. That's totally fine as well. But some people, you know, it's more fun to see your, your friend or your family member, your kid or your significant other opening the firearm they want on Christmas morning or on their birthday. It's a lot more fun than a piece of plastic. So anyway, there's that on gifts. Now here's a funny scenario on gifts. So to kind of show you the slippery slope and how these things might differ. A parent comes in with a 19 year old. The 19 year old wants a handgun. The 19 year old is, is with the parent looking at guns and says, okay, mom or dad, this is the one I want. And then let's just say it's dad. Dad says, okay, we're gonna go ahead and do this one. Here's my ID. That I would, and this, this is the most slippery slope scenario. That I would personally consider that a straw purchase because son is sitting right there. Son is paying for the firearm and has picked out the item that they want. They're just having dad do the background check because the kid who's under the age, you gotta be 21 to buy a handgun. Uh, cannot complete the background check on their own and they need the parent to do it for them. That in my, in that case, straw purchase, okay? Now, same scenario, same father, same son. Father, or the son says to the dad, you know, I want this Glock 19, you know, I want to carry it, blah, blah, blah. And keep in mind, it's not illegal, at least in the state of Indiana, for a person of the age of 18 or older to possess and even carry a handgun. They just can't go into a gun store and buy it. So backing up. Son says, you know, to dad, I would love a Glock 19 for my birthday. You know, my birthday's coming up. If you're looking for ideas, I want a Glock 19. Okay, fine. Father comes into the store alone without the kid and says, I want to purchase a Glock 19 as a gift for my son. In that case, I'd allow the sale to proceed because I understand that it's a good faith transaction that the father is legitimately buying the gun as a gift and son isn't you know, right behind him with his money and credit card you know, ready to pay but wants dad to do the background check. Um, and as long as I say, you know, son legally is not a felon, legally over the age of 18, so can lawfully own and possess the firearm. That is the most slippery slope area that I run into. Um, most other instances are pretty cut and dry. Another one is a friend visiting from out of state. Totally legal for them to own a firearm, say they're visiting Indiana, the friend is in Florida, they're visiting their buddy in, in Indiana, they come in the store, they see a great used gun price they want, they can't buy it from me, it's a handgun. If it's a long gun, they can. If it's a handgun, they cannot because they're from out of state. F friend says, you know, oh, I'll pick it up for you. You know, this is a, even though that they know the friend is totally legal in the state of Florida to own a gun, no felonies or anything, again, it's still a straw purchase because in Indiana, they cannot lawfully complete the background check. They have to have their friend do it on behalf because their friend is an Indiana resident. Now, same scenario, friend is in town for his bachelor party weekend or whatever. Friend B decides, I'm gonna buy that for my friend as his wedding gift and even though he's a Florida resident. So that friend comes in alone to buy it for his friend legitimately as a wedding gift. Straw purchase, no. <laughs> so, but keep in mind, in that case, those two individuals cannot transfer the firearm to each other in the state of Indiana because the person receiving the firearm is a Florida resident. So the friend would then, they would have to mail it to a gun dealer in the state of Florida and the guy when he gets back home can go into his dealer and pick it up. Uh, that's how that would have to how, how that would have to transpire there. Or we the dealer they can buy it and then we the dealer can ship it to their dealer and then they can pick it up when they're back in town. So it's a very weird. Keep in mind, 
the laws are not so cut and dry. They're very, the edges are very blurred and a gun store owner has to reasonably determine what is is the, the legal and ethical outcome of whether a straw purchase is or is not taking place there. So it's a little bit funny like that. So one anecdotal story, and I'll leave you guys with that. So locally, we have a, a gun store local to us. I'm not gonna name who they are, but they had a legal issue around this very topic. So what they did, what they had, or what the, and I'm, I'm gonna try and, and relay accurately kind of the instances of, of what this of what happened. I might get some details wrong, so bear with me. But they had two individuals come into their gun store and were browsing around. One of the individuals left, and the one who left had a felony conviction and was unable to purchase a firearm. The person who stayed behind, who was a friend, uh, decided to purchase a firearm. They completed the background check and they left the firearm, or they left the store, I'm sorry. Subsequently, since leaving, as it turns out, the firearm was in fact being purchased by the, the convicted felon who had left the store. Their friend stayed behind to buy it for them in the manner of a straw purchase. So subsequently, this person ended up in another town a week or two later and ended up in a shootout with police officers, I believe killing one and then severely wounding the other. Now the other did uh, receive actual life altering injuries and was no longer able to return to work and was effectively had to leave the police force. That surviving officer did end up suing the gun store for allowing a straw purchase to take place. This was back in 2014. At the preliminary hearing, the judge at that hearing agreed that the police officer who was suing did have a case and allowed it to proceed to trial. Now, after the trial, it did take about two years. It was determined that the gun store owner did not act negligently and it could not be reasonably proved that he knowingly sold the firearm to the second person knowing that they were committing a straw purchase, there was not enough evidence, but keep in mind there was enough evidence for it to go to trial. So even though the gun store was found to be uh, in, unculpable, you know, legally, they did still have to go through a lengthy two year deliberation process in court. I'm sure they paid lots of money for their attorneys and to defend themselves, which is again, exactly why gun stores are going to be very, very careful so that we don't A, end up in a legal battle, but B, most importantly, sell guns to idiots who are gonna go shoot police officers. So those are the two main reasons I don't take the risk if there is anything at all that feels like a straw purchase. And I stop uh, transactions all the time not all the time, I mean, relatively speaking, maybe a couple a month, that I think are, are probably a straw purchase. And unfortunately, some of those may not have been straw purchases, but you know what, I'm not gonna take the risk. And you, you have to, to walk that fine line between infringing on people's rights to, to own guns and am I selling this to somebody who's you know, gonna take it and, and give it to a felon, you know? So it's, it's, again, these vlogs are to put you in the mind of a gun store owner and to give you sort of behind the scenes interpretations of these laws and how you kind of conduct your business on a day by day grind, always having to keep the better interests of your community and your customers to heart while also not infringing on those same people's rights. So as you can see, it can be a really touchy scenario like this gun store found themselves in. I'm sure, well, legally it was found, I wasn't there, but legally it was determined that they did not have, they should not have had reasonable suspicion to believe that it was a straw purchase, therefore not guilty. So, and they are still in business today, but I don't know how much that, that hurt them and that sort of scenario. And of course you have uh, an officer who's been killed and another one whose his life has changed for the rest of his life, can no longer work and is on a severe disability from a something as stupid as a straw purchase. Also, the person who bought the gun and sold it to the other person, I believe, received nine or 10 years in prison. So keep that in mind the next time if you're considering buying a firearm for a friend or family member who is a convicted felon or cannot legally buy it themselves, you can serve severe ramifications if that firearm goes on to be used in a homicide. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Anyway, guys, I will leave you with that. Other gun store owners that might be watching this, let me know down in the comment section how you interpret uh, straw purchasing and how you protect yourselves and others against a potential straw purchaser. Uh, if you have ever been in a gun store and have had a gun store owner tell you that they're not going to sell you the gun because they thought it was a straw purchase, uh, let me know about that instance down in the comment section. It'd be interesting to get some dialogue on this. 
But anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button, subscribe, rate, and share. If you would like to see more content like this, hit that bell notification button. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV, and I will see you next time.